what's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp update video for you. So in today's video we're going to check out the new features contained inside of the newest version of SketchUp, SketchUp 2021. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so I will link to all of these different pages with all this information in the notes down below so that you can uh, go and check out all of the notes yourself. But yesterday SketchUp rolled out their newest version, version 2021. And so there were, there were some interesting changes that happened with this version. I figured we could kind of go through some of the changes of the things like that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the notes down below. But the first change um, is something that we probably should have seen coming. I'm a little surprised it didn't happen a little sooner is they've rebranded SketchUp with a new set of logos. So now the logos are blue and they've gotten rid of the old SketchUp logo in favor of this one right here. And so it's not really that surprising when you think about it. They've been with Trimble for a while and Trimble's logo and their colors are all kind of a blue. So it's not really surprising that they wanted to switch the color. I'm a little bit surprised that they've switched the logo to something like this. Um, if you take a look at it, if you kind of zoom in, you can see that um, this has kind of an S in it and then a U, so SketchUp and then also a 3D in here as well. So that's kind of the thought behind this new logo. So they've also changed the logos for layout, the 3D warehouse, all of their different uh, products in here as well. So things are going to look a little bit different. Um, I am going to miss the old logo. I really liked how it kind of uh, it kind of matched the simplicity of modeling inside of SketchUp. I understand why they've made this change, but I am going to miss the old logo because it was just so simple. It was kind of an elegant, um, simple way of conveying what SketchUp was. So that's kind of the first big change. Um, in addition, they've also released a blog post talking about their new features, which I will link to in the notes down below, and a forum post in the SketchUp forums, which I will link to as well. And so the first new feature that I think is one that people have been waiting for for a while is their new tag management system. And so the way the tag management system works is now it allows you to create folders inside of your tags. So I think this is a really great thing because up till now, you could have these giant lists of tags that you had to kind of like scroll through to get to what you wanted. Well now, what you can do is you can click on this button right here to add a tag folder. So if I click on tag folder, I can add this right here. And let's say for example, that I wanted to put all my flex components in a folder. I could just create a folder like this. Well then I could take these objects and I can drag them into that folder. And so the cool thing about this is this allows you to minimize and maximize them just like this, which really kind of gets rid of those old, those old giant lists of tags. So one of the cool things about this is not only can you turn these on and off um, one at a time like this, you can also turn off everything inside of a folder just by clicking the I next to that folder. So you can see for my windows, for example, I could either turn off the entire windows folder or I could turn these off one at a time, right? So that gives you a lot more control over the way that your tags, um, the way that your tags control visibilities inside of your model. Now, I will note that I don't think this really changes too much when it comes to the way that we recommend setting up your files for layout with different visibilities. So you're still gonna organize your model using the outliner and using groups and components, but this does give you a little bit better way to manage your tags and your visibilities. So I'm glad to see this feature. I think this is a good feature that's going to be very helpful, especially when you start working with those bigger models, when you start getting those longer lists. So in addition, they've also given you the ability to filter using this search. So let's say for example, that I was to we'll go ahead and maximize all of these, but let's say I wanted to find a certain tag in here where well, you can type in a word in order to look for that. So you can see I can use this to really quickly find um, a tag in here. So you, you can now search and filter your tag names in order to find things really quickly. So I think this is a good feature. I'm really glad to see this feature inside of SketchUp. And so another feature they've added is the ability to 
edit live components directly inside of SketchUp. So if you remember, we talked a little bit about live components in the past. These are the components that you can download and bring into SketchUp and you can adjust just by adjusting different sliders and other things like that. So let's say for example, that we were to bring in this shipping container. So I'm gonna bring this in. And previously, if you remember, you, you had to configure this inside of the 3D warehouse window and then bring it into your model. Well now you can download these into your SketchUp model like this. And you can right click on them and click on configure live component. And you can configure these live components live inside of SketchUp. So the cool thing about this is this now allows you to adjust these different things um, really quickly. So for example, notice how I have these different options in here for like the size of my components. I can also adjust things like my colors and other things like that as well. And so you can now do this live inside of SketchUp. And and so I do think in the future, this is gonna be a really great function. We currently do not have the ability to create these ourselves. Um, I think that's coming at some point in the future. But for right now, I think this is really kind of a step in the right direction. These seem to be, um, I, I like these a little bit better than the dynamic component functions that we have in there right now. So excited to see where that's gonna go. Um, but you can now edit those directly inside of SketchUp. So in addition, they've also released a new tool called Predesign. And so Predesign is a tool that you can use in order to do like site and energy analysis studies of different locations. So let's say for example, that we wanted to create an office building and I'll just call this office. And let's say this was gonna be located in, so you can select an area right here you can select a weather data source, and then you can click on continue. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna do an energy analysis um, of the different energy efficiencies and other things like that of the location. So for example, if I was to click on this, now that I've created it, you can see how it's gonna do a seasonal analysis. So it's gonna give you an analysis of what the weather is like, as well as other things in here like, um, like different architectural responses. So things that are gonna make the most sense from an architectural standpoint. Um, you can see like how much time, for example, in different parts of the year, um, you would need to just provide shelter from the cold, um, take things inside, other things like that. So it gives you different options for looking at the energy efficiency of this location. And so I'm not a designer, so I don't know if this tool meets a specific need or not. Um, if this gives designers what they need, um, notice how you can adjust things like uh, your different uh, glazing locations and other things like that um, in order to get kind of an analysis of the way buildings would lay out. But again, I don't know. Um, I'll be interested to see how much this tool gets adopted. Um, it seems like it provides some good information, but I don't know if it replaces something that designers you're doing or not. So in addition, there's some smaller changes. So for example, they've rebuilt the SketchUp file format. Um, they say that you can probably see a reduction in file sizes when saving to the new format. Personally, it feels like this is building on something in the future, but I don't have any information about what that might be. Um, I would definitely like to see a reduction in file sizes, but I have no idea if this does anything for performance or not. But um, if they're making the file format more efficient, then I think that's definitely a good thing. So they also have a couple smaller features. So for example, you can now download updates directly inside of SketchUp. So if you didn't like downloading those external installers, I think this is going to make it so you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, and they've also added a two finger pan and also pinch to zoom in layout on Mac. So they've expanded some of the navigation options inside the layout on Mac as well. So that's kind of an overview of the new features contained inside this newest version of SketchUp. I'm also going to link to a blog post right here. This is where they made the official announcement of the new version of SketchUp. So if you have feedback or anything like that, that'd be a great place to leave it. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the new version. Um, as always with these new feature update videos, uh, make sure to keep it civil in the comments down below. I'd appreciate that. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.